Everything is just getting warmed up, both figuratively and literally. As the seasons change and the temperature gets a little warmer, we're going to start seeing more Antifa versus MAGA clashes. I guess you can call them MAGA clashes or just Antifa attacking random people who want to like wave the American flag. Or in like one instance, a guy was driving down the street with the Gadsden flag in his truck. They smashed out his window. You see, in Oregon the other day, there was going to be a freedom rally. And they kind of do this every so often where a bunch of trucks will just drive through the city and wave flags. And that's it. And Antifa, being a bunch of lunatics, want to come out, I don't know, like injure and maim people and just be a general nuisance. What ends up happening then is the police do not actually do anything about Antifa, encouraging, emboldening and pushing the line further and further in favor of domestic extremism from the left. At the same time, we hear from the press that the people who are at the January 6th Capitol riot aren't deserving of lawyers and that those who try to raise money because they're poor people who did something dumb, they're, they're not entitled to their defense. Well, they are entitled to their, their defense. I think many of the people who stormed into the Capitol, well, everybody who stormed into the Capitol is, in my opinion, what's the right way to put this? Well, they deserve prison and they will, they will likely get some kind of penalty. However, I want to differentiate between the people who violently attacked cops and those who bumbled their way in and didn't realize what was going on. Now, I bring that up because as we have another incident with Antifa versus, you know, I guess, patriots or right wing individuals, whatever you want to call it, there's a video going around where Antifa begins attacking a vehicle. They throw paint on the windshield. Now, the guy probably can't even drive it safely. They begin banging on the car. He gets out and apparently someone hits him with a rock. So he pulls a gun and he chambers around and then he tells everyone to get back. He keeps the gun low to his side and he puts up a sand saying, get back. The cops rush in. Thank our lucky stars. The police were here to stop these violent Antifa criminals and put this Trump supporter or MAGA guy on the ground, take his, his gun, cuff him and then detain him and take him away. Now, it was initially reported this guy was arrested. He wasn't arrested. And that's good. Now, I'm not entirely surprised the cops see a guy with a gun and they take the guy with the gun. However, you, you recognize the problem here? These Antifa extremists, they're, they're all wearing black. They're flying communist symbols and they're smashing vehicle windows, just violently attacking random people. And this guy who got out with his gun had every right to get out of his car and tell him to back off. And then when they physically attacked him, he had every right to draw his weapon. He didn't draw it on the people. He pulled it from its holster and he chambered around and he said, get back. Now, let's talk about some of this, right? I should probably read this story, but I just want to say this, right? I don't want to bury the lead on this one. He didn't point the gun at people. He didn't hold it up like we saw with the McCloskeys in St. Louis and tell them to get back. He kept it low and he put his hand up. The reason why you would have a weapon like this and draw it in this situation is because you are concerned they may actually present a lethal threat. So he gave him a warning and he armed, he, pre- he prepared himself in the event they escalated. He didn't try to kill anybody because he got hit with a rock. He was just telling him to get away from his car because he was concerned they might actually step it up. Why? Well, we saw in in it was in Provo, Utah. One of these Antifa guys ran up to a random car and shot somebody through the window, just went up the window and bang. So this guy saying, get away from me, man. Well, they detained him. Now, again, initially it was reported he was arrested. I guess they did detain him, take him away, and then eventually released him and said they're still investigating the incident. I think it's entirely likely this guy's not going to get charged because Oregon is an open carry state and you're literally allowed to carry because you're being threatened. And if someone is literally attacking you, a group of people, like if, if that's not a point at which you can announce that you're armed, put your hand up and say, get back. I don't know what is. Or what the purpose of even having a weapon would be if they're going to arrest you every time you try to defend yourself. Not the first time this has happened, mind you. Well, let's read the story. And then I'll talk about journalist fragility because now we have journalists going after the people who stormed the Capitol. And this is important, too, because everyone is entitled to their legal defense. But there's an interesting phenomenon happening. They mentioned that some of these people have raised like 180 grand. What does that say about what's going on? The media does not represent the interests of a large swath of people, half the nation, perhaps. Well, here's the first story. I'll read a little bit of this and then we'll jump over to to Oregon Live. They say, moment, Trump supporter pulls gun on rock throwing Antifa rioters who smashed his truck taillights, sprayed paint on his windscreen and then surrounded him. They say video captured demonstrators spray painting across the windscreen of the truck, smashing the taillights before the driver steps out with a gun and points it directly at Antifa. I, I don't believe that's correct. 
he he does chamber around and he's holding it forward and then he lowers it immediately. He did not raise the weapon to a firing position. He, he had it, I guess you could say low ready is, is the proper terminology. I could be wrong. They say the tense moment was one of many clashes between left wing and anti-fascist demonstrators and right wing protesters. I just want to remind you guys, the Berlin Wall was called the anti-fascist protection rampart. That's right. These people's the, the, these people, the communist types, they love using semantic manipulation to make you think they're the good guys. The Freedom Rally was advertised as an event to honor those who fought for our freedoms. Protesters on the sidewalks and in the streets in Salem threw objects at a number of vehicles who drove uh, by the Capitol with American flags. So you, I'm, I'm sorry, you're never going to be able to explain to me how it is the people driving their vehicles waving flags are the bad guys. I don't care what the flag is. I honestly don't. They could be flying a flag that's got a giant, I don't know, uh, McDonald's, it could be a McDonald's flag. I don't care. You have, free, you have a freedom of speech in this country. You can fly stupid flags and we can really dislike you for what you believe. We can say, you don't, you know, your ideas don't belong in civil society and things like that. But guess what? First Amendment protects the individual's right to say these things. Now you got people showing up and smashing out windows, throwing bricks through windows, smashing taillights, surrounding vehicles, throwing paint at vehicles. I think we know who the bad guys are. It's the large group of domestic extremists attacking people in pickup trucks with American flags. Now, listen. We can talk about what kind of flag they're flying. If somebody showed up flying like, I don't know, a sickle and hammer flag, I'm not going to be a fan of that person. I'm going to be like, yo, that's that's messed up. But they do it anyway. These Antifa people show up with shields with the communist revolution fist and the sign, the Antifa sign, which is literally from the German Communist Party. And again, Berlin Wall called the anti-fascist protection rampart. We know what kind of world these people want to create. They are psychopaths. They think that once they get their world, their utopia, they will be on top. And I mean it. I was at Occupy Wall Street. I actually met with and talked with a lot of these organizers. And for those, for those of you that are fans, you may, you may have heard this, but this is important in this context. They say they want to flip the pyramid over. That's what they described it as. That way the working class will be on top, or so people assume. What they're actually saying is that if you took a stack of bricks in the shape of a pyramid and flipped it over, it would crumble into a jagged pile of bricks with some random working class person on top. Take a look at the fall of the Soviet Union, countries like Ukraine, the oligarchs after the after the, country, the Soviet Union collapsed and the Ukrainians who ran different factories had no idea what to do because the leadership was broken. A bunch of basically mafioso types showed up and said, it's ours now. You report to us. And they instantly became billionaires and millionaires who just run the country from now, for, for, uh, from now on. That's what these people want. If they flip the pyramid, it gives them an opportunity to run in guns ablazing and take things they want. It will not be a revolution of the working class. Those people will just suffer. And then whatever order there was to this pyramid will not be disorder and chaos in a just jagged pile of bricks. That's what they're doing. Oregon Live says, dueling demonstrators clash. Are you kidding me, Oregon Live? Dueling demonstrators? You have one group of people who are driving trucks and honking horns, and another group that's bringing weapons and, and throwing bricks through windows. I guess the cops did eventually come out and push these Antifa people out. Several of them did get arrested. The problem is they get arrested and they get cut loose. The system can't sustain itself. This is, this is, it's insane. They say, Dueling groups of demonstrators faced off near the grounds of the Oregon Capitol building Sunday afternoon. Police tried to separate them, but skirmishes broke out in the surrounding blocks. Jamie Ding for the Oregonian. How would you describe this as dueling groups of demonstrators? This is, this is what I don't understand. So I'll tell you what we're planning on doing. We're actually getting really close to hiring some writers for TimCast.com. We are going to be having a new, uh, a new website rolled out maybe even this week. I know I said that last week, but we're really getting there. The big thing we're trying to make sure we do properly is all the existing for a new website. We have to make sure every existing membership still works. So I think we'll still be good. And that's kind of slowed us up a little bit. But we're going to have articles. I'm going to hire some journalists and we're going to write stories on this kind of thing. We're going to break down the lies and use logic to actually frame what's happening. It is not dueling demonstrators. This is journalists who are either sympathetic or scared of Antifa. They're worried. That if they come out and tell the truth, oh, they'll get attacked like Andy No did. Remember that? Andy No reporting on Antifa in a not too positive light. Antifa didn't take kindly to that. And considering they're domestic extremists, started beating the crap out of Andy and left him bloody with like a broken tooth. And he's got blood coming out of his ears. They'd have killed the guy. I honestly think so. If they were given the chance, they have, they have, I forgot what they're called, like sap gloves or something. They're, they're gloves that have hardened plastic, I guess, punching him, beating him 
throwing things at him. And they all laugh about it. And the journalists all defend the behavior because they're either sympathetic or they're scared of Antifa. I think a big factor in why journalists would like why journalists would say something like demonstrators faced off is because they're like, if I say they're violent extremists, then they'll attack me. Well, I'm not afraid to call these people violent extremists. Sorry, I may, may not be a big fan of the politics of some wackos, you know, flying ab- ab- absurd flags like a communist flag or a Nazi flag or something like that. I respect their First Amendment rights and I will criticize them. I'll challenge their ideas and I will rally people to oppose them. I will not show up with bricks and and weapons. That's insane. That's what these people do. The problem is, listen, I'm going to be completely honest honest with you guys. If Antifa actually showed up, and they have, to actual like neo-Nazi and Klan rallies, when they do that, I'm kind of like, I got no problem with that. I actually like it. I do. Now hear me out. There were a few rallies where Antifa showed up and counter-protested, and they did not get violent. They just presented strong opposition to a small group of I don't know. What's the right word for these people? Out of time. I'll put it that way. Anachronistic ideologies. Just really dumb fascistic ideologies. I said fascistic because there's differences. But when these people show up and there were actually a large group of leftists and Antifa types who surrounded this rally and just protested like, go home. I was like, that's good. That's a good thing. You have a right to protest. You can protest other people. What's not good is when they show up with bricks, weapons, guns, etc. Now you have a right to open carry. Okay. So if they if they were all open carrying, fine. And this guy in the truck, he did. But they show up with with these weapons. They know they can create a massive nuisance. And they're threatening people who are just flying American flags. Therein lies the problem. If you have someone who this this is how they try and frame it. There's this comic where it's like a bunch of people holding up signs saying racial justice. And then the other side is a bunch of Klan members saying that, you know, they want to kill people. And in the middle is a centrist guy. And he's like, compromise. And I'm like, no one believes that, dude. No one. That is not what centrism is. Centrists are like, hey, look, there's some conservatives with moderate views. I respect those. And there are some liberals and even some far leftists. Well, I don't, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the far leftist ideology, so long as they're peaceful. Same is true for the wackos on the far right. Stay peaceful, argue, and we'll resist. Centrists just say the left's got a little bit right, the right's got a little bit right. But what they keep doing is trying to frame some regular guy with an American flag like, like a Klansman or a Nazi. No, sorry, you don't get to play that game. A regular working class dude flying the American flag is a regular dude. But they want to shift the Overton window. They want you to associate these people who are getting attacked with the fringe far right. And that's what I really love. You know, I tweeted last week that I finally attained the singularity. And it's because right wing media called me left wing and left wing media calls me right wing. And it's just like, oh, the perfect position, I suppose. What they want to do is they want to force everyone to look at anybody who's, a, you know, the joke is to the right of Mao as far right and fringe. So they establish themselves as the normal, the centrists. They've done this with memes. I think it's hilarious where there, there's one where it's like, here's how Americans view it. And Bernie Sanders is far left. And then you have like, I don't know, a Klansman or whatever, far right. And they're like, here's the reality. And Bernie Sanders is center left. And then there's nothing on the far left. And I'm like, dude, Bernie Sanders is not center left. All right. And I'll tell you this too. Ideologically, I am, I am not center left. I'm actually pretty far left ideology, but I'm very, very, very libertarian. So I'm like almost, almost anarcho, like communistic. I mean that literally. However, the realities of modern politics leaves me as more of a moderate American because as much as my ideal worldview is like a bunch of hippies on a farm sharing their watermelon together, you know, think crops they grew. I don't think that is, is a grand reality. I don't, I don't think it's possible to attain. So I want to point something out about what they do. So we, we see this happen. We know this guy's getting detained, right? I've had a lot of people who, you know, hit me up and they say, can you promote our brand? And I'm like, do you know the kind of show that I do? And they're like, I don't care. They're all excited. They're like, you get millions of views, man. If, if we had brand, no, I'm not going to do it. You know why? Here's what happens. We put on an event in, in Philadelphia, in the, in the Philadelphia area, in the suburbs. And Antifa called up claiming that it was like a far right event, even though Daryl Davis was our headline speaker who de-radicalizes Klan members. This, the, they threatened to burn down the theater And so the guy who runs the theater called me and said, we're not doing this. We're done. It's canceled. We know whatever. Then went to the press and the press wrote up the story about like, you know, activists successfully shut down event. They call far right, blah, blah, blah. And there it is, the framing device. 
So what happens is the far left knows that all they have to do is make the accusation and the news outlets will report it. Then other news outlets will report it. And then you'll have a series of articles saying an alleged far right event or a far right event and all these other insane things. Now you have 50 articles claiming you're far right, putting on far right events. That's what they're trying to accomplish with these things. So I'm like, listen, I'm not I'm not going to promote anyone's brand. And then the moment some Antifa guy screams that the, the apocalypse is happening, have you come out and make a statement denouncing me because you wanted me to promote you? It's never going to happen. You need to understand what's going on with the culture war. And that's the name of the game because they will lie about the things I say. And, then, and they do. Something really funny happened, you know, in the past week because I've been tweeting a bunch of just like general leftist opinions. And so all of a sudden all these leftists are like, what's happening? But they weren't really necessarily leftist opinions. I was tweeting like pro 2A stuff. I was tweeting like trans people should be armed to the teeth to defend themselves from bigots and transphobes. And I genuinely believe that. And they're like, why does Tim say that? And I'm like, I've always believed that. I believe the Black Panthers should be armed. I believe anybody who wants to defend themselves and protect themselves from oppression should have guns. I, you know, I became much more 2A over the past couple of years. And so all of a sudden they're like surprised. Well, here's what's really happening. When I do segments... The grifters, and there's tons of them, will find whatever they think is most likely to enrage the left so they can make money. And they'll pull things from my show that maybe as a moderate, the left won't like. And they'll ignore all the things the left does like. Then all of a sudden, I have someone like Vosh on my show, and I get a bunch of messages from leftists saying like, oh, I, th I thought it was actually really good. I thought you, you, you're actually pretty chill. Yeah, maybe if you actually watch what I say. And so the people who do, they get it. What happens with these Antifa in the streets? They're trying to do a framing tactic. Two things. First is the, deci the decision dilemma. They want this video of the right wing guy pulling his gun. Either he does nothing and he's beaten down and they say, look how pathetic you are and they keep doing it. Or he defends himself in a reasonable fashion, low ready gun at his side with his hand up. And they say, oh, no, the extremists are pulling guns. Oh, no, what do we do? And they use it for propaganda. The other thing they do is essentially, regardless of the decision dilemma, they will tell the press neo-Nazis and, and white supremacists showed up and the press will just say it. That's what they do, either because journalists are sympathetic or because they're scared of Antifa, which brings me to this next story. Check this out from USA Today. Insurrection fundraiser, capital right extremists, Trump supporters raise money for lawyer bills online. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. People have a right to defend themselves. Poor people have a right to ask for resources to defend themselves. In this story, they point out that apparently some people have raised like $180,000, I guess. Here's what they say, quote, it's so predictable and it's never going away, said Megan Squire, a computer science professor at Elon University, who studied how extremists raise money online. Whenever there's money involved, it's never going to stop. There will always be something new that pops up. They mention, in one case, a crowdfunding website set up in late 2020 has been adopted by a defendant charged with storming the Capitol, who used it to raise almost $180,000. His was one of eight fundraisers on the site as of last week, and his donations accounted for 84% of the money raised on the platform. Bouncing from one fundraising site to the next, because GoFundMe is ideologically uh, ideologically hard left, like most of Silicon Valley companies, they will ban you if there's any hint of right wing. They'll freeze your money, they will lie, and they will smear you. Here's what you need to you need to be careful for. People need to understand this. If a company, look, Gina Carano, really good example. What did she do? She's the woman from the Star Wars show Mandalorian who got fired. She posted on Instagram, "Stop demonizing your neighbors." That's all she said. She said, in Nazi Germany, they demonized the neighbors so the, so the people were attacking each other. Don't demonize your neighbors. How is it any different? Blah, blah, blah. She did not name any groups. She did not say she was a victim. She said, stop demonizing your neighbors. Disney put out a message saying, we, we reject these bigoted statements targeting marginalized groups. And then news stories pop up saying, Gina Carano fired for disparaging minority groups. That's what they do. Or Disney fires her for, that's what they say. And it's all opinion. And it's unfalsifiable. And the people who live in the matrix who don't actually read the news and don't actually see what she wrote or just want to stay in the tribe won't think critically. These are the kind of te techniques and tactics they use. When USA Today writes about these people, these, these, these you know, the people at, uh, on, on January 6th, they make it seem like they're evil for raising money. But you need to understand, $180,000, who's giving that money? Certainly there are people who do not agree with the media. They even mention that Give, Send, Go featured a campaign for Kyle Rittenhouse, who shot and killed two people. And 
Destiny, who is a very, very far left, or I should say very leftist uh, Twitch streamer, defended Kyle Rittenhouse as well. Any honest person who's telling you what happened in these situations is not going to make a blanket statement about extremists. Yet I have these conversations all the time with people who don't read the news, where they're like, well, Kyle Rittenhouse was traveling across state line to hunt down these, these, these poor you know, Black Lives Matter protesters. And I'm like, dude, there is so much wrong with what you just said. And that's the, that's the problem we have in this country. Heaven forbid people in this country actually learn about what's going on or want to, but they don't. Now, there are many people. What's interesting is that they would call me, you know, I think it was Salon or Slate or something, called me a right wing podcaster, even though my ideology is rather far left. um, My policy positions in the United States are center left. I say it's right wing. All they're really saying is that I read the news. Why? Because you'll say something like this. Is it right wing or left wing to be in favor of guns? Socialists believe in guns. The Socialist Rifle Association believes in gun rights. And Karl Marx said, under no pretext should arms and ammunition be surrendered. It must be frustrated, but the workers must frustrate this by force if necessary. And the Constitution says the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Sorry, that's not a left or right thing. However, they will call you right wing if you defend guns. How does that make sense if I say I'm in favor of universal health care and gun rights? Sounds much more like the Socialist Rifle Association than the NRA, right? Maybe there are some things that regular working class people agree with, even if the ideologies conflict. Now, sorry, Socialist Rifle Association. I think socialism is very, very bad. I understand the root idea of the workers controlling the means of production. I just don't think it works all that well. I think we need still some kind of hierarchical system, though I'm not a fan of the corrupt crony corporatist system we have right now. That needs to be toppled. The establishment elites are a serious problem for a proper functioning of this planet. I think that's something a lot of people on the left and right agree with. How you solve that? I don't know. But that's why I said tax the rich. All of these industrialists who exploit the system, I don't care about. I care about the guy who starts a construction firm and he's making a decent amount of money. Maybe, maybe, maybe even makes himself a millionaire as a real estate developer. I got no problem with that. In fact, I think that's fantastic. He starts a business. He does it. He provides a service. Everybody flourishes. What I do have a problem with Amazon lobbying power, the government then shutting down small businesses so that everyone's forced to go to big box stores, sending all of their money upward into these mass in the hands of a few billionaires. And then you get the, the mass printing of money, which is further spent on Amazon and Walmart and Target. Nah, I ain't about all that. Anyway, I digress. This is where we're at right now. There's a lot to talk about, and maybe I should uh, uh, chill, but I'll point out a few more uh, important points. Richard Hanania. When Glenn Greenwald criticized this journalist who wrote about people raising money for their defense, he said, I like how the journalist for the USA USA Today set out to stop Americans from from being able to pay for lawyers. And the defense of media is actually shame on Glenn Greenwald. We don't actually pay her to do this. Is it better that the commissars work for free? Turns out the woman who wrote that article is an intern and she wrote it for free. Glenn Greenwald made an important point. People have a right to defend themselves, even if you don't like them. They did it for the, uh, uh, you know, people at Guantanamo Bay get lawyers. Some of the best, actually, pro bono lawyers. But this woman is writing pro-establishment propaganda. Glenn Greenwald points it out, and they all go after Glenn Greenwald. Why? Journalists are some of the most fragile people I have ever seen in my life. They are overpaid, underworked, and extremely weak-willed. And that's the reality. They're either weak-willed in the sense that they uh, just bend the knee to extremists because they're scared or they're weak willed in the sense that they join the tribe because they're desperate for some kind of social acceptance. And here you go. How dare you insult a journalist who's trying to strip people of their rights? I'll tell you this. I jokingly said Lindsey Graham mentioned he had an AR-15. And I'm like, Pfft. he was like, if I if I, you know, if, 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 if everything falls apart and I got an AR-15, the gangs aren't coming to my house because, you know, I can defend myself. And my response is, AR-15. Pathetic. We should ban the AR-15 outright. And then the government should provide everybody a surplus M8250 BMG. I'm kidding. The joke was they want to ban the AR-15. There's a bunch of different weapons you can get that are functionally identical, and they're not AR-15s. It's the stupidest thing ever. And I'll tell you what, you really want to defend your neighborhood? Sure. It's called the 50 BMG anti-material rifle. I'm kidding. That's not going to be a particularly good weapon for defending your home. Maybe taking out the Antifa helicopter, if at some point they ever get that. I'm joking. They're not going to. I mean, what do I know? I can't, I can't see the future. I'm just saying, well, we need to chill, and we need to be aware of the propaganda tactics, and that's what we're seeing. 
They want the video of the there's a video where this guy who pulled the gun on the Antifa people is being released. And they're like, see, if he was any other color but white, they'd have killed him. It's like, dude, you're the bad guys. But they're putting police in this position and it's working and it's getting worse. Well, I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out and I will see you all then.